What I'm saying is you don't have to spend big money on something that says it's just going to grow your hair back because you might be disappointed. So no matter why hair loss has occurred, be kind to yourself because stressing yourself out about it, it can cause you to lose more hair. Hey, hey, y'all. What's up? It's your girl, Dr. Nina. Now, I know you over here because you missed me. <laughs> I miss you too, I miss you too. But today's video is all about hair loss and hair shedding. Now, I know I'm talking about postpartum hair loss and hair shedding because I just had a baby about 13 weeks ago. And so for me, uh, we in a little bit of a triggering territory, okay? Hair loss can happen for multiple reasons, whether it's stress, hormonal imbalances, illnesses, and other things. I have gone through hair loss before now, okay? So this video is for all of us that have experienced that, but since you all are following my journey, I wanted to make sure that I'm upfront and frank about some of the things I'm encountering. So I will say this too, if you've gone through this, it can really be hurtful to your self-esteem and your feelings, but know that you can't be hard on yourself. Multiple times in life, we encounter things that change the way we look even temporarily. So you can get through this. And today's video is all about those tips and things that might reignite your fire for figuring out what you can do for your own hair and your own journey. All right. And I want to hear from you y'all. My community is who holds me up. Y'all amazing. Y'all my family. So let me know down in the comments some of the things you've encountered with hair loss. Even if it's not postpartum, what are some of the things that you've done? What are some of the videos you want to see from me in the future? Okay. And you know what? You know, I'm going to tell you, if you feel like there is a health related issue behind your hair loss that has not been identified, you need to contact your doctor and or your dermatologist. And y'all know, I, I tell you all the time, I'm not Jesus and I did not raise Lazarus from the dead. Okay. So so today I'm not giving you no miracles, but I'm definitely going to get us on the road to making sure that we take our own journey seriously and figure out this hair loss thing together. We're also going to make sure that we dive into the nutrition, different tools that I'm using, as well as hair products that can help you on your journey as well. And in the meantime, also all the items that I mentioned today can be found down below in the description box. Let's get into this. Postpartum hair loss is real, obviously, okay? It's not in your head. It is something that I am living. I will tell you this. It usually happens about six to 12 weeks outside of giving birth, which is why most women don't even report it or notice it until their baby is about two to four months. The reason for this is because the hormones in the bodies is coming down. You know, your hormone levels are changing. Everything is rapidly changing within your body. And so your hair is no different, all right? For me in particular, what I started to notice is hair was on the float back. I was looking around like I ain't even did nothing to my hair with my hair on the ground. So when I gave birth, I had braids. And then after that, I took them down and washed them. And I was like, okay, we shedding. All right, we shedding. And what I also started to notice is even in pulling my hair into a ponytail, which y'all know I don't do ponytails tight. They might look tight, but I use a product to make it look that way. I still was seeing a bit more hair coming out. I don't even comb or brush my hair that often, but even those were a little bit more traumatic. And so I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into that. However long it took for your hair to start falling out postpartum is usually the amount of time you need for your hair to start seeing meaningful regrowth. So for instance, if your hair started falling out around week eight, then you'll probably start to see those patches start to fill in a little bit more around week 16. This type of hair loss feels way worse than what it is because when you're pregnant, you really don't even shed any hair, like zero to 10 strands a day. Now on a regular day, most of us shed about 60 to 100 strands. Now take that and sometimes you're shedding even more after giving birth. So you might be shedding about 150 to 200, which seems like even more. And you might feel like you're going bald. And that's why a lot of times you see patchy hair or edges missing because you may have lost just a bit more than what you had right before. And so that's the areas that need a little bit of work and love in order to continue to flourish and grow back in. If you have a lot of hair like me, let me tell you, it's gonna seem like even more hair, <laughs> okay? because a lot more has to come out. So you might be shedding an extra 20 to 40 strands per day and it's going to feel like you're losing so much, but there's literally just more hair on your head that needs to be shed. Bars. Knowing what I'm eating and having a healthier diet have been essential for me. Now, I ain't gonna sit up here and say I'm Jesus. I ain't saying it's gonna heal you or cure anything, but it can definitely help with the rejuvenation of the body. I got real serious about this. I was already eating pretty good, but I got very serious because I wanted my foundation to be much better because I was predicting that a lot of these things would occur. So I am into fruits, vegetables, and proteins. Those are my things. Those are life for me. I got real 
serious, got meal prep service because I'm less, you know, got less and less time. And also I have a postpartum nutritionist who really helps me to look at my macros and know the things like my carb intake, my fat, my proteins, my cholesterols, all those different things that are essential to making sure that your body is healing from within. So to be more clear, I wanna give y'all a quick rundown of some of the things that I eat during the day. And let me know if you want a dedicated video on what I eat in a day. So the first thing is I usually in the morning have a premier protein shake or I will make, or Sean will make me a green smoothie. And with that, those are like 30 grams of protein each. And I usually have a Waco's yogurt with the extra protein, about 20 grams of protein, as well as some granola and a banana, y'all hidden okay everything from your fats to your proteins and your carbohydrates now for my lunch and dinner i play around a little bit so your girl usually have something like a grilled chicken uh, a turkey tenderloin or shrimp or salmon any leaner proteins except for the salmon gives you a little bit more of a fatty meat but then also i'm pairing that with jasmine rice and sweet baked potatoes often and i always have something green so i'm gonna have me some squash some green beans some broccoli some mixed vegetables anything that's going to help with my nutritional foundation and I'm also drinking about a gallon of water a day again. Yes, I am. We're trying to make sure that we're replenishing and never dehydrated. So y'all, I'm pretty careful with my styling and I keep it pretty loose. And by that, I mean, I try not to put a whole lot of tension on my hair. So when I gave birth, I had knotless braids and I kept those six weeks postpartum. So I had those about two months. My little cousin did them. Danny be killing it. If you're in the Houston area, hit her up. I got her information down below. But when I tell y'all those braids were great, when I took them down though, I knew I was entering into shedding because I had extra shedding. Even though after you take braids down, you have a lot of shedding. I had quite a bit, okay? <laughs> then beyond that, I went in and started to do my normal styles. I usually do buns or my two buns or something low profile. Now these might look like they have a lot of tension, but they do not. I usually style with satin scrunchies or those protected hair wraps. They really do make things look tighter. And especially my stylers like the Magic Fingers Studio hair gel and edge controllers. I like to make sure that I use those so that it makes the look a little bit more, you know, tight looking, but it's not. I also like to make sure that I'm styling minimally overall, even though that ain't gonna save your hair either. If it's gonna shed, it's gonna shed, but I don't wanna cause other hairs to get caught up in the fire and come out as well. I also try to make sure that I'm keeping my use of tools minimal. So I use like a white tooth comb or my uh, brush with the brush with the best brush in order to detangle my hair and only when it is wet and has conditioner in it not a heavier one i also like to make sure that i am using my satin scarves or my silk scarves as well as my pillowcases you cannot play around you should be basically be able to slide out the bed we ain't trying to cause no friction to cause any extra hair coming out and I want to reiterate that no hairstyle on the face of this earth can stop the shedding. If it's going to shed, it's going to shed. You just want to make sure that you're protecting the hair underneath and giving your hair a fighting chance to grow back. And while I do get color retouches only about four times a year, so usually every three to four months or so, I usually will stay away from them if I'm seeing additional shedding. So I just usually go in to try to make sure that I'm checking and assessing the health of my hair and get the ends clipped. But you know, if my hair is okay, then I will go through the things that I like to get done. But for now, we just trying to keep it real, you know, real basic. One of the best things I've done for myself is kept a solid and simple hair routine. I like to keep things standard so I can go back and review what I've done so I can know what worked and what didn't work. I like to stimulate blood flow to the scalp so that my hair has a fighting chance to grow. And I like to make sure that that scalp is clean so that my pores are declogged and those hair follicles have a chance to be clear and free so that the hair can come through. Massaging those thinning spots is one of the best things that you can do because it's one of the most natural things you can do. And also, I also feel that when I'm massaging, I feel that my skin is doing well or doing much better underneath. It also helps me to make sure that I'm unclogging those pores that are on my scalp and that my hair doesn't have the chance to just set and settle and prevent growth. So my fingers have been the best thing for this. But look, if you have a hard time really remembering to massage your scalp and you need some incentives, baby, this silicone little thing here 
here. I'm sure y'all have seen other people use them before you've even seen me use them. This shampoo brush or just massager brush works amazingly, okay? It has a low, medium, and high setting. Hold on, don't give me the line. It just got a low and a high setting, okay? Don't get one and be like, she said it had... It's just those two settings, but you hear it here, and it really does feel good on the scalp. I've even done this after I've like blown my hair out, and I'm able to just kind of get in there, and whoo, just thinking about it makes me feel good. It just feels so good. It feels real good. So one of these is really good, especially for those of us that have a hard time remembering to just do it on our own. Just keeping this even in your shower is a good idea so that you can remember to massage your scalp. Y'all, I am so focused on shampooing with gentle products and cleansing that scalp because that's where it's at. So one of my favorites right now is the Redken All Soft. I know y'all have probably seen this. I know you've seen it on my channel before, but I love this because it's a shampoo that seems to do some detangling, okay? I love how it leaves my scalp feeling and also my overall hair, and it's not heavy and it's not weighing it down. You won't get a whole ton of suds if you're not using a whole lot, but it definitely gets you clean. Another one that I love, and it's a detoxing shampoo, is the way and y'all have seen me talk about this one a lot this is the detoxing shampoo all hair types that it's for but the acv in it is so amazing and when i do this to my scalp when i use it on my scalp it just feels so good what i'm trying to prevent though is drying out my scalp and my hair because you know as hair comes out it moves down the hair shaft and if your hair is dry it's gonna be snapping off okay like potato chips and i don't have time for that so the two conditioners i've been using so remember i said no products that are super heavy right now because I'm not trying to weigh the hair down or pull it out even further. So I like the way medium hair uh, conditioner. So this one is not their super heavy one. This one is the one that's in between. It coats the hair enough, but without pulling the hair down or pulling it out. So I do like this one as well to follow my shampoos. And then also the Retkin All Soft Conditioner, which clearly I'm trying to hold on to every last little bit of this thing. Okay, um, but this conditioner is really, really good. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll add some almond oil or jojoba oil to it, and it just leaves my hair feeling good and smooth. Some of the treatments I'm using right now because I'm staying away from super harsh or heavy hair masks, but lighter ones are okay. I have the Olaplexes here, and y'all know they have a bond maintenance conditioner, which I actually like. I've always liked this one. It helps with the bonds of the hair. And then they also have the Olaplex, and that one's the number five. But then I also use the Olaplex number eight. And a lot of these, a lot of people that have color treated hair or things like that will swear by these. But I also thought that these were wonderful when I just had my black and natural hair colored hair. I like this Olaplex number eight. This is the Bond Intense Moisture Mask. And this moisturizes the hair. What I find is my hair feels so much smoother and it also just feels like it's not stripped. It helps to replenish that moisture, which is something that you need when your hair is going through a shading phase. Another mask that I like is It's a 10. I also like their leave-in, but It's a 10 has a miracle mask and they also have a leave-in conditioner. Both of them leave my hair feeling amazing, just smooth and good look another thing about a lot of these products is while you might see the price for some of them is a little bit higher you don't use as much products and the product usually does not just sit on top of my hair it penetrates and i absolutely adore it i think it also makes my hair just i don't know it just makes it feel rejuvenated it makes me feel like i'm doing something good for it when i feel good I do good and I look good, okay? So I also love, as an after wash treatment, I love the Not On My Watch. Um, I love Un Jackie's products. They are very affordable, but also work pretty well. I can say this one is great. And I looked up on this one at Burlington for $9.99 for all of this, but this one is a detangler. So it acts as almost a leave-in, but you use it as a detangler. And I tend to use that and still use a leave-in. The leave-in that I've been using nowadays that is simple and easy is the Myel Pomegranate and Honey Leave-In Conditioner. It's moisturizing curl primer and detangler for thick curly type four hair. What I find with this one too is it just, adds a little pizzazz to my hair. It's plain and simple, no jazz to it. It basically just makes sure that my hair is detangled and not falling out of my head. And it also leaves it moisturized, especially if I'm going to do a wash and go or add gel or additional products. So I like that. And as far as dry massaging my scalp, I also love the Sunny Isles Jamaican Black Castor Oil. I also have another type castor oil, but this one is one that I love to use. The Sunny Isles brand is amazing. 
amazing. I have other things by them. Plain and simple to the point, but their Jamaican black castor oil is thick and rich, but not so thick that it weighs down the hair. I do love this. I've even used this in my eyebrows and my eyelashes, and it works really well as a great protector. So that's the Jamaican black castor oil. Other than that, y'all have seen my other tools, like my wide tooth combs, my brushes, those types of things have all stayed the same. I do blow dry from time to time with my Rev Air, which is low tension, and you can use cool air in order to dry the hair just like you used hot air. And I absolutely love those or my little grandma curlers that I can sleep in overnight. But otherwise, mama keeping it real simple when it comes to the hair care. And all of these products are linked down below for you. So I wanna be 100% honest out here. There's no one product that you can pick up that's just going to grow roll all your hair back and do the things that a lot of these products be saying they doing, a lot of these serums and oils, a lot of that is BS. While there are properties within them that work very well, a lot of it has to do with the physical things that you're doing to your hair. So if you're massaging your scalp and getting that blood circulating and all of that, you're going to see results with that. So even if it is a great product, it's going to work really well, but let's say it's a crappy product. And y'all know Amazon reviews and other reviews be having it. A lot of people will talk about how much growth they experienced. So let's say you buy a serum two weeks after your hair starts falling out, but then you spend four weeks rubbing it in, giving yourself regular massages, and then your hair starts growing back right on schedule. Is it that product or is it the process or is it both? I think making sure that you're doing a bit of both is really going to be helpful. It's been helpful for me. Let me say all oils and serums are not bad. That's not what I'm saying. If it smells good, you like it, and it's not clogging your pores, go for it, especially if it gets you to massaging your scalp. What I'm saying is you don't have to spend big money on something that says it's just gonna grow your hair back because you might be disappointed. Also through this process, no matter why hair loss has occurred, be kind to yourself because stressing yourself out about it is actually counterproductive. It can cause you to lose more hair. And also our bodies are made to do certain things. And a lot of times this is letting you know that certain things are changing within your body. Even if it's not postpartum, there might be some stressors or some hormone levels that are out of balance or out of whack that we need to pay attention to. So be kind to yourself in those situations and don't think so negatively about it. Just figure out things that are going to work for you. Take it like me as a new journey. And if all else fails, consider mixing it up. And by that, I mean, maybe go for a new haircut. You know, I am preparing myself that maybe one day we might be changing it up a little bit. You know, cutting your hair can give you a new view of your hair, make it appear thicker as well. Even if it's just a bob cut or a short pixie, whatever it is, give yourself something nice to look at. If you're going to go through a transition, maybe even thinking about a new way to go through it. All right, y'all, I hope y'all have enjoyed this video. Like I said, hair loss for all of us is quite triggering a lot of times, especially when you don't know where it's coming from. But especially for me, I was kind of preparing myself, embracing myself for the postpartum hair loss. And no matter what the reason is for you, again, be kind to yourself. It is something that we all go through and with different challenges and changing, we stand up to it, okay? So make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching y'all, beautiful brown baby doll. Peace.